Today I'm going to show you how to use the printable palette to get the perfect digital print colors every single time. I'm going to tell you what the printable palette is, three steps to using it, and then I'll go into FAQs and some specialized use cases at the end. So first, what is the printable palette? Printable palette is a giant 50 page swatch book with over 2000 swatches. They all have CMYK and RGB numbers on them. You can print it as many times as you want on any printers or paper or through any print shops that you use as well. Now, why would you do this? If you've ever printed the same thing on multiple printers, you can see that the colors print very differently. For instance, the difference in these two colors, these two colors, even though they're the exact same CMYK code is kind of remarkable. And if you print on different colored paper or different types of paper, this one is on vellum, for instance, the colors are gonna change even more because usually the color of the ink interacts with the color of the paper. So even if you have the same CMYK code and you print it across 10 different printers, you're gonna get 10 different results and all of your pieces are not gonna match. When you have control over what goes into the ink, like when you're letterpress printing, you can mix your ink with a Pantone formula guide. And if someone chooses this Pantone color and a thousand different printers mix it and print it, it's gonna be the same every single time. But that just doesn't work with digital printing. So even if you have the exact same CMYK code, you're gonna get different results across different papers and different printers. So that's why I created the printable palette because it's basically a giant swatch kit that you can use to translate colors from one printer to another or from one paper to another. So let me show you three steps of how to use it. So as an example, I am trying to match this blue colored envelope on my printer over here. So what I'm gonna do is find the page in the printable palette that most closely matches this tone of paper that I'm trying to match, which is this page, page 14. It's got all of our like teal, nice turquoise blues. So since I'm going to be using this printer over here, I'm gonna print this page only as a samples page just on this printer. Okay, I've printed out this page. Now the next step is to compare these and find the swatch on here that most closely matches this envelope. This one right here is pretty much a perfect match. So I'm going to note that CMYK code, which is 7601136. I'm just gonna write that down. Now step three is just to change my artwork to the color that I want to match. So I have this blue printed program right here and I'm gonna change all of the blue to that CMYK code that I wrote down. 76, 0, 11, 36. And if I were to compare that color on screen to my envelope, it doesn't look exactly right, but since I already printed my sample swatches and I know how it's going to print, I know it's gonna print in the color that I want. Now it's key that I use the same printer and I'm using the same paper that I did for the samples, otherwise we're going to get different results. So now I'll click print on this artboard six. And here we have our print. Let's see how good of a match it is. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely perfect. I'm gonna overlay a photo here so you can see how perfect this matches every single time. Okay, so now you understand how to use the permal palette, that one, two, three step. What are some different options? So what I did today is just for this job, I printed one sample sheet of kind of the range of colors that I needed. But what if you're not printing in house? If you are ordering from somewhere, for instance, Princewell is my favorite printer and I work with them all the time. If you've never worked with them, check out some of the other videos on my channel and you can get $25 off on your first order with my link. So what I did was I printed all 50 pages of the palette on my house stock through Princewell. So my house stock is Princewell's 120 pound eggshell ultra white. I printed all 50 pages and I just cut along these white lines and I punched holes Along here, there's actually a guide here of exactly how to do this. If you would prefer to just put these eight and a half by 11 sheets in a binder and flip through them, it works exactly the same way. But if you want them to be on a ring, kind of like a Pantone deck, then you can cut them 
and hole punch them and put them on the ring. I have four different rings for the entire palette because I wanted to keep them on a small ring, but you could put them all on a much larger ring if you want. Now, a lot of people ask me about the different files, so I wanna show you what you're gonna get when you grab the printable palette. First of all, there's going to be files with bleeds and without bleeds. In neither of these files, you can see over here, in neither of them are the colors going to actually really bleed off the page. So this is the one with bleeds and you can see that there's still that white line around the edges. Um, that's okay, it's not meant to necessarily be 100% perfect, but it's still gonna work exactly the same every single time. Some printers require, like if you upload to Printswell, they'll require a file that's sized with bleeds. So you can upload this one that has that extra bleed on it. Um, if you don't really know what this means, just ask your printer if they need bleeds or not. Either way, all of the text is far enough in that it's not in danger of being cut off. So it, you either need to upload the with bleeds or the without bleeds file, but you shouldn't need both of them. It just depends on how you're printing. Then we have our updates file, both with and without bleeds. Uh, this is because after working with the original palette for some time. I gathered some feedback from some of the designers who had used this. Over 1,300 designers are using this right now. And there were some ranges of color that we didn't think were perfectly handled. So we added some additional color ranges in here. Um, a lot of like jewel tones, gold colors, corals, dark blues, dark greens, etc. So there's a lot more colors in there if you want to um, add those. You can always start with the regular palette and then print the updates, or if you want to combine them into one file and print everything at once, you can do that as well. So some print shops are gonna use different machines when they're printing envelopes versus when they're printing cards. And so there might actually be color differentiation between a white envelope and a white piece of paper. For instance, Princewell has different machines. So there is a version of the palette that is sized to print on A7 envelopes um, in case your printer prints envelopes on a different machine. A lot of people like this version of the palette as well. It has about half the number of swatches um, because it can be printed on a smaller sheet of paper. And if you use like an inkjet printer that uses a lot of ink to print things like this, um, printing on a smaller piece of paper, smaller swatches cannot conserve your ink. So if you're only printing like one page especially, using this smaller version can be really helpful. People ask me what's the difference between the printable palette and a Panto guide, and I think the key is that you don't have control over the ink. When you're mixing with Pantone colors, you typically have control over the ink. It's usually UV printing, screen printing, letterpress printing, etc. And the formula in here tells you exactly how to mix that ink. So even if someone else was doing it, if they use the same formula, they're still getting the same result. My random printer over there, or even the giant Printswell machines, et cetera, all these print shops that you're using for digital printing, are using printers that they don't control how the ink is mixed. So the machine is gonna control how the ink is mixed, and therefore you're going to get different results every single time. So I like to think of this as not necessarily um, making the CMYK code on screen print exactly accurately to screen, but I like to think of it as translating from one printer to the next, from your screen to your printer, et cetera. It's gonna give you an idea of how this CMYK code is gonna print into this color. So if you want this color, you have to use this CMYK code. It's kind of like reverse engineering, as opposed to this one, which is telling you how to mix the ink so that it'll look the same every single time. Some digital printers will Pantone match, but just to be clear, they're not doing anything magical. They are physically taking the time to print a copy, compare it to the Pantone color visually, um, do some adjustments if it needs to be made, etc. And that's really hard to do when you're working with uh, pieces that have a lot of different colors. So if you needed to match the purple and the green and the blue all on the same piece, um, that's gonna be really hard for them because when they make an adjustment to one, it might adjust the others as well. So if that kind of explains what the difference between the Pantone book and the printable palette are, you definitely still need the Pantone book when you're working with any ink that needs to be mixed. Pantone also has a bridge, which will give you a CMYK code that's supposed to match whatever formula color that you're choosing from the Pantone deck. And I just wanna be clear that even as good as they are, they can't account for the differences in printers. So even if you get the perfect CMYK code that matches this Pantone swatch on your computer, if you print it in 10 different places, you're getting 10 different results. And that doesn't mean that the CMYK code is wrong. It just means that the printers are handling it differently. So I hope that kind of explains why you need 
this type of product, which is a translator. It's going to tell you how to get the result that you want. And sometimes if you're printing on three different printers, even my two printers in house don't print the same way. Um, so even if, so if I was trying to get the same color on something from Princewell and then something I printed in house and then something I printed on a different printer in house, I might need three different CMYK codes to make all three of those pieces match. And especially if you are printing on different colored paper, I'll put an image on screen here for you, of printing on a few different envelopes. And you can see how different that starred color looks when it's printed on blue, purple, pink, etc. So the color of the paper, even like a soft white versus a bright white can really interact with the, with the ink and change the colors entirely. So if I had to give you some advice, I would recommend for in-house print jobs, I would just print one sample sheet every time you're working because that's just gonna give you the most accurate results and then you don't have to go through the trouble of printing the entire thing if you're not needing it at the time. Then for any printers that you use very often, such as Princewell for me, because about 90% of my printing goes through them, print out a larger deck and you can keep it in a binder and not cut it up or you can cut it up and bind it like this. It doesn't really matter. You can use it however you want, um, but any print shop that you're using very regularly and you wanna make sure you can get accurate results, this is the key to doing that. And it works so, so well every single time. So let me know what questions you have about the printable palette. This thing saves me so much time and energy and money. It saves me from having to order sample prints every time or from printing something and guessing which color I need and it's showing up in the totally wrong color because that has absolutely happened before. So I love this thing. It is so, so helpful and over 1300 designers are using it already. So if you want to grab a copy, I'm gonna link it in the description of this video. Thanks everyone.